welcome to part 11 on the case of discipleship now i want to talk a little about my background to give you an idea of how i got into discipleship and why i'm so passionate and to also establish a little bit of my credibility i'm not just making noise about it but i'm actually coming from a trained perspective so let me give you a little bit about my background my spiritual background and then we will talk about the topic which is meeting needs as a key component of discipleship all right so i was born in the adventist home serving the adventist home when i went to primary college at the age of i think 15 14 i'm not sure what exactly the age i was but i gave my life to christ like i got born again joined the scripture union and then i found myself in a charismatic church Calvary Charismatic Center and the pastor in black was my first pastor in the charismatic world right Dr. Gospel all right so right from there then I joined my family in in the United States and I found myself in a Sermons of God church the reason being that when I was coming from Ghana I spent a couple of months in in Accra and I was an AG boy at that time so when I came to New York City then I continued AG right but at some point in my AG experience it was about 10 years of service of God and that is where I actually uh, grew the passion to be a minister and I did attend the Berean Bible School online as an AG boy right so that's a little bit about my spiritual development and then uh, another incident took place where the pastor in the middle Apostle Elvis, well, I came in contact with him in New York and he uh, was the pastor for CCC New York. You see the connection now. So he spoke to my pastor gospel at that time he was in London and then they connected with me. And so I asked permission from AG and I became the pastor for uh, CCC New York. Pastor Elvis handed over to me. You see that? And now uh, from there, then we're going to talk about the late Dr. Rick. And so when I took over the work in New York, they became uh, necessary that I just cannot take over the work in New York unless I get trained officially. And so I, I got a scholarship to go to Singapore for six months to get trained, right? In Singapore, then I became, um, I was trained as a church planter trainer. In other words, I was trained to go train pastors who are going to plant churches. You understand that so i was to train pastors on how to do church that was kind of what i was trained in but the reason why i brought the late dr Eric, who died in 2018 is because uh he according to i mean arguably dr Rick is um the the most uh, uh globally uh, an apostle that was one of the greatest apostles to ever live yet unknown let me give you some figures to figure it out i mean to understand what i'm saying um all of you who are from africa you know um the redeemed church right uh papa adeboy church right they have a global footprint or a global membership of um over six million people with four thousand churches all over the world right so that which is big dr rick seward on the other hand based in singapore has over eleven thousand churches globally right so you're talking about a heavyweight right but he lived his life so simple that i'm not sure whether even he went on the radio before or something like that right and so if you're talking about four thousand going i mean churches equal to six million then 11,000 talking about uncountable number of souls that came into into the kingdom because of his leadership you understand that right and I brought him the picture because when I got to Singapore I had a one-on-one -on -one with him in a class and then I asked him uh, uh, mind you I uh, let me let me keep the story going so I asked him Dr. Rick um so what is the key to church what is the number one key to church, you know? And if I listen to other pastors and people that I ask these questions, the common answer I get is the key to church is prayer. 
Kwame, the key to church is fasting. I just listened to listen to Dr. Deboy, I mean Papa Deboy, and he says he's been fasting for 40 days like nobody's business, right? So I was expecting something like that from Dr. Rick. But he says, he looked at me and said, Kwame, the key to church is meeting needs. Meeting people's needs. And no matter how simple it sounds, it is absolutely true. And for the next four parts, I'll be talking about meeting needs, right? The key to church is meeting people's need. And every pastor must therefore understand that there are countless needs that need to be met. If we take children, children have needs. Adolescents have needs. Young kids have their needs. Teenagers have their needs. Single mothers have their needs. Single fathers have their needs. Newlywed couples have their needs. Widowers have their needs. Divorcees have their needs. So you see that the, the, it is a plethora of need that if the church will intentionally meet those needs, then we will be able to have successful ministry. You understand that everywhere people gather, they are there because of a need. Every church that you see a big crowd, there is a need that is being met there. And so I want us to talk about what it means for a church to meet a need. And discipleship is a key way that you meet needs. So it's very, very important. Uh, let me give last comment and then we'll continue in part number 12. The key to a successful church in the diaspora, based on a little experience I have, is clearly meeting needs, right? A lot of powerful young men that I know, they are frustrated and they don't understand why they are so anointed, but yet still so they're not pulling crowd as some of our fathers who supposedly feel that they are not like more uh, on fire, but they just calm and very collective. But there's a lot of people that are sitting in their churches. That is primary because any immigrant that comes to the diaspora, you have no idea the deepest need of every immigrant for your information when i came to america i've been here for god knows how long more than 22 years or so the first year i came to america i never had any dream that i was in america all my dreams that i had the first year was me being in africa the second year all the dreams i had was me being in africa the third year, all the dreams I had was me being in Africa. It took me three and a half years before I had a first dream where I was in America. That means that even my soul never joined me till the third year. Do you see what I'm trying to say? So when we come from Africa to diaspora, we are longing for the need to feel at home. So if you go to a community church where there's a lot of Africans there, no matter what, that church will be stable if there's not a lot of friction going on. You understand that? So the key, Dr. Rick tells me, the key to church is meeting needs. And there are all kinds of needs. If you go to where there is healing, it's because they need spiritual needs. If you go to a church where there's prayer, because they need the needs that are there, only prayer can solve. So I, I, I want us to now talk about meeting needs as the next few parts on the case for discipleship. It is critical that the church open up and intentionally meet needs. And if we do that, we will have the kingdom expanding uncountable souls coming in and they feeling that God really cares about them. All right, we'll continue tomorrow.